All right. So in 7.6, I know problem solving is not your favorite thing in the world to do, but I'm going to teach you some techniques that make it kind of approachable at least. So we'll talk about 7.6, some problem solving, and this is going to involve some proportions as well. If you remember what a proportion is from your pre-algebra days, a proportion is simply an equality of two fractions. So for instance, are these fractions equal? Yeah. That's a proportion. It's just one fraction equal to another. The nice, excuse me, the nice thing about proportions is that you probably learned something about these. If you cross multiply, you ever heard of cross multiplication? You cross multiply, it's equal. The cross products of a proportion are equal. So for instance, if I cross multiply here and here, I see that 1 times 8, notice how I'm multiplying across, will equal, in fact, 2 times 4. Now, while that might not be so surprising to you, do you see that it's equal? 8 times er, 8 equals 8. This allows us to solve proportions really, really easily. For instance, let's say I didn't have 1 half equals 4 eighths. I had something like... three-eighths equals nine over x. Hey, is that still a proportion? Yeah. Is it a fraction equal to a fraction? Yeah. Yes. That's what a proportion means. So is that still a proportion? Yeah. Sure. Is cross multiplication still going to work? Absolutely. If cross multiplication works in every proportion, it also has to work in this proportion as well. So what that means is that if you ever get a proportion, it's not really a long, long process to solve this thing, all you have to do is find the cross product. Cross product, product means multiplication, just cross multiply. So if we cross multiply, can you tell me what two things I'm multiplying together first? Three, Three times. Okay, so I need to cross here times here. Equals, what's it going to equal? Where are you getting 72? Eight times nine. So just like up here, we could multiply the 1 times the 8, and that had to equal the 2 times the 4. We can do that in this proportion also. We can multiply the 3 times the x. It has to equal the 8 times the 9. This happens with every proportion that you see. Are you guys okay with this object? If you're all right, we're getting this far. Okay, this is from, from a long time ago. I'm just kind of fresh your memory, and then we're going to build on this in just a bit. Uh, so yeah, we get 3x equals 72. Last step we have to do is just divide. It's a basic equation for us. X equals how much is that going to be? And you know what? You could check your answer. If you plug in 24 right there and you simplify it, you're going to get out 3 eighths. So that's one way to check that. Now, how many of you feel all right with, it, with this, what we just did? Good. Now, we can apply this to some rational expressions. And it's going to be kind of nice. I'm going to leave this one on the board for just a second because um, I want to compare this. Hey, do you have an equal sign? You know what that means? That means that you could, look at the board here real quick, you could do this problem exactly the same way that you did this problem, which would be find 35, multiply both sides by 35, and cancel out the 5 and the 7. Does it, do you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Then you distribute. However, is this a proportion? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's one fraction equal to another. Do you see what I'm talking about? That's what makes this a proportion, one fraction equal to another. Is this a proportion? No. Do you see how we have more than one fraction over here on the left-hand side and more than one fraction over here on the right-hand side? A proportion is one fraction equal to one fraction. So as soon as you have this other garbage kind of messing it up, this x out front and this 2 out back, once you start having that, you can't cross-multiply because, I mean, when you think about it, what are you going to cross-multiply? Just these two? And then you're missing out on that one and that one. You see what I'm saying? So this is kind of a special case of rational equations. It says if you have a proportion, cross multiply it makes things a little bit easier. If you forget about cross multiplication, you just blank it. And you go, oh my gosh, I don't remember what to do with proportions. 
Well, you can still solve it that way, right? It just takes a little bit longer. It's not a problem. You just have to find the LCD and do the same exact thing. But if you have a proportion and you want to do a, like a shortcut, I guess, uh, use the fact that this is a proportion, all you need to do is cross multiply that. Great song. <laughs> <laughs> Great song. Sorry. Girls just want to have fun, right? Yeah. Girls <laughs> want to have fun. <laughs> Were you born in the 80s? No. <laughs> you weren't born in the 80s? No. 90s? 70s? No. <laughs> just kidding. I didn't ask, I just suggested. <laughs> okay, so firstly, do you see the difference between this problem and that problem? Yes. Do you see how this is not a proportion, yet this one is a proportion? Are you sure? Proportion just means one fraction equal to another one. This is really similar to this problem. If we cross multiply, if we cross multiply, we can solve this pretty quickly. So let's do that. If we cross multiply, I am going to get what times what here? 2x plus 1 times what? 5. Now I'm going to put the 5 out front because that is going to distribute. You see what I'm talking about? I can't just put 5 times 2 because we have to also take that to the 1. Equals, same thing happens here, 7 times x minus 3. So we have those parentheses, parentheses signifying that we are going to have to distribute that. But now, look, I mean, we didn't have to find an LCD, did we? You could have done it that way. You could have found 35, multiplied both sides by 35, simplified it, and then distributed just like you did here. You could have done the same thing. But this makes it a little quicker because you don't even have to think about LCD. Not even if you're with me on that. It's kind of nice, right? Does, it, does this work here? Okay, you can't multi cross multiply because you're forgetting about these things. But here, no problem. We'll distribute 10x plus 5 equals 7x minus 21. Okay, let's see if you recognize these things. Should I get everything to one side and zero on the other side, or should I go directly from here? Go directly from there. How? Subtract the minus seven. The seven. Okay, that's our smaller variable, so we're going to get rid of that. Three x plus five equals negative twenty-one. From here, basic equation. Get rid of the constant term first. We'll subtract five. We get 3x equals negative 26 after we divide by 3. x equals negative 26 over 3. Do you feel okay about that problem? <coughs> Would you like to try one on your own? Let's do that. Try that one. I want you to identify if or if it's a proportion or not. See that you can see that in your head if it's a proportion or not. So be thinking about that. And then solve it. Is that a proportion? Yes. Good. You see that it, there's one fraction equal to one fraction. You see what I'm talking about, right? One fraction equal one fraction. That means that you have two options to solve this, two. You can either find the LCD, LCD in this case would be 18, you with me? And you can multiply both sides by 18 and cross stuff out and then distribute, that's fine. Or you can cut out the part of finding the LCD. And that says if you have a proportion, it's a special case of equations, you can, what's that called? Cross multiply, or you might also hear it said cross product. Find the cross product. Cross product just means cross multiplication. How many people cross multiply? Good. 
Did you use parentheses when you cross multiply that over? All right, so here we said it says 9 times x minus 1. It really doesn't matter which one of these is on which side. It does not matter. So if you have this one first, that's fine. It's, it's an equation. The sides really don't, don't matter. Okay, you can have it on either side. And then 2 times 3x plus 2. Did you make it that far? Cool. Then we distribute. We all know how to distribute. That's not a problem. We're not going to get everything to one side. We're just going to subtract a smaller variable in this case. We'll get rid of our constant term. Last step is always to divide when I have a coefficient. We're going to get 13 over 3. Would you raise your hand if you got 13 over 3? Fantastic. If you didn't, see where your mistake came. Where I can't have it come from right now is right here when you're cross multiplying. You have to have this set up correctly. That's like the foundation of what we're learning. Everything else is just basic algebra that we've already accomplished in this class. Now, how can we use the idea of proportion in a couple scenarios? The first one is with a word problem. You guys ready for a word problem? No. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, if you want, do you want to have a party instead? Yes. Have a party? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, we're going to have a math party. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah? Okay, math party. Here we go. So you're having your math party. Awesome. And you're going to go to the store and you're going to buy sodas. So you went to the store already and you bought four two liter bottles of soda. And what it cost you was $5.16. But because it's a math party, it's super cool. <laughs> and so more people want to come. So you have to go back to the store and buy more soda because you know four is not going to be enough. Because you have like at least eight friends coming. <laughs> it's a for a math party, trust me. Uh, so you have these four two liter sodas and it costs you $5.16. How much will seven more cost you? How much will seven sodas cost? Now, I've got to tell you, there's several ways to do this problem. I mean, lots of ways. I'm going to show you one way. I'm going to show you the proportion way because that's what we just covered, okay? So here's one option you have for solving this problem and setting up a proportion. Here's what you need to know about proportions. As long as you keep the units grouped together by fraction, then you're going to have your proportions set up correctly, okay? You either group units by fraction, like one fraction is the same type of units and the other fraction is the same type of units, or numerators and denominators. Things have to match up. So numerators have to match up, you're talking about the same thing, and fractions have to match up, you're talking about the same units. Here's what I mean by that, because that was pretty vague. The units we have in this problem are what? Soda. Soda, or bottles. We'll say bottles, okay? We're talking about bottles, and we're talking about what else? Money. 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 How much money this, this stuff costs. So here's what you need to do. You need to group your bottles here and your dollars here, or you can group your bottles here and your dollars here. What you need to also make sure is that you're talking about the same, uh, same comparison on, the, on your fraction. So how you set up your proportion, it kind of it matters. Let's say that we want to set this proportion, and I say I'm going to put my four bottles here. Four bottles. As soon as I do that, my proportion is pretty much set up for me. I only have two choices. I can either put seven bottles here or seven bottles here. We're trying to make a comparison, right? So I said, if four two-liter bottles, how much does four two-liter bottles cost me? What I'm going to do is say four bottles equal 516. Are you seeing how that works for you? That's a nice way to set things up. Four bottles equal 516. Now you tell me where's the seven bottles go? Can the seven bottles go over here? No. No, it can't because this is this is not a bottles fraction, right? This is a dollars fraction. Seven bottles would have to go here. What's going to go here? 
Do we know how much seven bottles equals in cost? That's why the X goes there. Hey, look at that. What is that thing that we just set up? How do you solve a proportion? How will you describe it? That's what I told you. There's several ways to actually do this, okay? There's several ways. Uh, this one is just using a proportion. So you, you could do it that way. In fact, if you really think about it, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, just a slightly different order, okay? Yeah, but yeah, you're right. You could. Now, because we have a proportion, we can cross multiply. We get 4x equals 7 times 516. If you have a calculator, take that out and multiply 7 times 516 for me. 4x equals how much is 7 times 516? 0.12? So we multiply, we cross multiply, we multiply these numbers together. Last step is what? Yeah, if we do that, we're going to get what? 903? So you go back to the store, you buy your seven two-liter bottles, you know exactly how much it's going to cost, you run through, you put down a $5 bill, four ones, and three cents, and you're out, right? Perfect. So you're really quick, you go back to your fun math party, and everyone has a great time. How many people enjoyed our math party? <laughs> uh, I knew you would. Next time we might have a pizza party. Ooh. That's about fractions, though. So Does it make sense to you? <clears throat> now, I want to give you another, another suggestion here. If you don't like the way this is set up, you could do four bottles and seven bottles. You could do bottles on the numerators and costs on the denominators. You just have to know that 516 would go with four bottles. So it would be 4 over 516, 7 over x. Notice how when you cross multiply, that makes no difference. Okay. One last little application of these proportions deals with a little bit of geometry. Have you ever heard of similar triangles? We will heard of similar triangles. We will take a geometry in here. Okay, good. Not a lot of you. This is new for you. That's fantastic. Have you heard of triangle? <laughs> no. That's enough geometry for, for this class, okay? You don't need to be a geometry class. Have you heard of similar? Just the word like we use in English. Yeah. What's similar mean? Same. Exactly the same? No. No. Alike. Kind of alike, yeah. If you had a brother, you might look similar. Or a sister, you might look similar. Are you exactly, exactly the same? No. Not unless you're twins, right? Which it might be, whatever. But similar means the same, about the same. In geometry, it has just a little bit of a different classification. It says it's very, very much the same. The only difference is same shape, just maybe a different size. It's kind of like an Austin Powers. You ever watch that movie, Austin Powers? And you get Mini-Me. Have you ever heard of Mini-Me? It's like Dr. Evil, but like eighth the size. Looks just the same. It's just He's wanting size in every way. So he's just shrunk down, you know? That's, that's who Mini-Me is. And that's the idea of similar shapes in geometry. It's that you, you have exactly the same proportions, you have the exact same comparison amongst, amongst pieces, um, in our case amongst sides, it's just shrunk down or it, enlarged. Um, you, you see this in model cars a lot. You ever see a model car? Model cars have the same uh, they usually have like 48 to 1 ratio, or 24 to 1, or 12 to 1 ratio, which says that everything's shrunk down by a factor of 12, or 48, or however much your, your car is. But, I mean, the, the doors still look right, don't they, on the model car? And the hood still looks right, because it's all in the right proportion. So that's what we're talking about similar. So in similar triangles, What we have here are, are two shapes which are the same shape, the same exact look, only one's bigger and one's smaller. What we need to know is that in similar triangles, the sides, the, with corresponding sides, means the sides that match up, are proportional.
Okay, let's go through a couple of these words. Proportional, we already know what that means. That means can be set up in a proportion. So proportional means you can make a proportion out of it. What's corresponding mean? It belongs to? In the same sign. Kind of, yeah, exactly. So let's, let's do a little experiment. If I say, point to the part of your body which is corresponding to this part on my body, what would you point to? Would you go, uh, <laughs> probably not, right? What part is corresponding to this part for you? Hold it up. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully you're holding your left hand up, right? You're not going to go, <laughs> no, not, not quite, right? You're talking about matching up parts here. If I went corresponding to this part, you're going to point to your head, right? That's what corresponding means. It means the same part in a different shape. In our case, the same part on a different person. But in the shape, it says the same corresponding or matching up part. Do you understand the analogy there? So let me try to draw for you some similar triangles. Now, I'm not the best artist, so we're going to pretend I'm drawing the same shape here, okay? Even though they might look different. Triangle. Hey, that's not bad. It's pretty good. I'm glad to have that on video. Prove to people I can actually do that. So, are those the same shape? I mean, like the same even type of triangle, I know they're both triangles, but are they the same type of triangle? Yeah, they're, they're quite the same shape. It's just one's much bigger, one's, one's smaller. Can you tell me corresponding sides? So, I'm going to put some numbers up here and you tell me which ones match up, okay? So, here's 12 and 9, and this is X and 15. Can you please tell me which side matches up with the 9? How about with this blank one? And 12. Good. Even if I were to turn this triangle around, those would still be the matching up side. Do you agree? Even if I pictured it differently, those would still match up. So in the same, uh, you have to look at the same relationship amongst those sides, that means corresponding. So 9 and 15, those are corresponding. Blank side, blank side, and then 12 and x. What we know is that we can set up a proportion from these corresponding sides, and this allows us to find missing sides. That's kind of cool in geometry that you're able to do that. So here's how we do that. Very similar to the last problem, only this time we're not talking about bottles and money, we're talking about corresponding sides. You have two options. Again, you can match up sides here, or you can match up sides here. I like to do it this way, that way I'm working on one fraction, okay? That's just what I do. I'm sorry, um, I like to do it, like keep one triangle here and one triangle here. That way it keeps it easy for me. So we're going to do the same thing that we did over there. I'm going to start with 12. Can you tell me what side 12 kind of equals? What I mean is corresponding, but what side does 12 equal? Okay, cool. Does that make sense to you? Now, what has to go here? Notice we have to keep the same triangle here. So 9 has to go here. How much does 9 kind of equal? I gave it away there, didn't I? Yeah, my bad. So we set up this proportion. We have 12 is corresponding to x. We have 9 is corresponding to 15. We have to keep the same triangle in each fraction, just like we had to keep the same units in each fraction over here. Very similar idea. If we cross multiply, that's no surprise, right? We can cross multiply these proportions. We get 9x equals 12 times 15. Someone help me out with 12 times 15. 180. 180? That makes it nice, because when we divide by 9, we're going to get 20. And we find a missing side to a triangle. Kind of nice. Not too bad, right? As long as you remember how to set up that proportion. Now, again, you did have an option here. You didn't necessarily have to do 12 equals x. You could have done, I want corresponding sides this way. 12 over x, 9 over 15. It wouldn't make a difference, because when you cross multiply, that's commutative. It doesn't matter which order you do that. So you have options on proportions on which to do. How many people understood the similar triangles I do? Good, okay. Okay, let's move on. I think we're ready for we're ready for a legitimate word problem. Well, not legitimate. This this isn't gonna be like Tim and Sue build a house. How much did they spend or something like that? We're going to have like a sentence that's all about math and we'll be able to translate it and then that will lead us into a legitimate word problem. 
So here we go. So write this down. The quotient of a number and two. Haven't you had those your whole life? The quotient of a number and two. Oh. Just think about me, my poor life. I've had these literally my whole life. Okay? So forget you guys. I'm the one who's struggling. You picked it. <laughs> Did I? Did I? What if it was forced upon me? My dad was a math teacher. What if I just had to do this? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I secretly just go home and study English all day. <laughs> no, that's not true. Okay, that sounds like enough for us. I'll push some homework in this faster on really fast, okay? Oh, here's your roll sheet. Get this pass around really fast, okay? <laughs> here's another homework. Get this pass around really fast, okay? <laughs> Make sure that gets Okay, the quotient of a number in two minus one third is the quotient of a number in six. Um, setting up this problem goes back to like your pre-algebra class. This is how I teach this in pre-algebra. The first thing I teach is I want you to undermine all the words up here that mean math. And I want you to start with the word that means equals. What word up here means equals? Yes. Okay, how sentences work is everything that comes before the is is on the left-hand side of your equation. Did you know that? And then it comes after the is on the right-hand side. So when we have the is, that's a big step. That separates, hey, this is going to be on the right, this is going to be on the left. That's, all, that's what we need to know about these type of word problems, these equations. So let's go ahead and keep underlining. What's another word up here that means math? Start from the beginning. Okay, quotient. What's quotient mean? Divide. In our case, that's going to be a fraction. So we're going to have a fraction here. Let's keep on going. The quotient of a, num a number means something in math. What's a number mean? Does it have to be x? Okay, good. Let's pick something better, like uh, v. The quotient of a number and two, well, two is kind of obvious. What's another? Minus. Minus. Minus, minus means? Minus, I hope so. Minus. One third is. We already had the is. That's our equals. Quotient, we already had that one. That's division. How about the number? What's the number? Is it different from the one you picked, or is it the same as the one you picked? So if I pick B here, this has to be B, quotient of the number and 6. Let's go ahead and do the right side. It's going to be a little bit easier. Let's figure out what the quotient of B and 6 means. The quotient of B and 6. We're going to have a fraction group that's division. What's going to go on top? B. Good, that's written in order. So here on the right side, we'll have B over 6. This is the quotient of b and 6. Now we'll work on the left hand side, the first part of the sentence. The quotient of b and 2, how, what's that going to be? b over 2. Good. Minus 1 third. Well, that's not too bad. What are we going to put after that? Minus The quotient of b and 2 minus 1 third is the quotient of B and 6. You should be able to read this and read that and have it make exactly the same sense. How many feel okay on getting that far? Okay, okay, good. Oh my, can we solve that problem? Yeah, I'll see. Sure. How do we solve that problem? Does it have an equal sign? Can you get rid of fractions? How? What is your LCD here? What am I going to multiply 6 by? How many terms here? Three. So I would take this and go, oh, my LCD is 6. Multiply 6, 6, and 6 over here. Notice I'm not finding a common denominator. Folks, i got an equal sign. I'm trying to get rid of denominators. Don't find common denominators. That's way too much work. My goodness, just simplify stuff. So here we're going to simplify and get 3, I hope. Here we're going to simplify and get 2 times 1, or 2. Here we'll simplify and we'll get b. 
Ladies and gentlemen, are you with me so far? How do I solve this problem the rest of the way? I could, I could, but what if I want to keep that positive? Is it okay to subtract B from over here? What am I going to get? That's fine. You can do that. So if I subtract B, I'll get 2B. Notice that taking away 1B, that does make the B go down. Some people have been adding Y's and getting the same. Some people have done that. 6Y plus Y, oops, on, on your homework. 6Y plus Y is 7Y. Not true. Not sure. Oh, sorry. That is true. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Testing us again. Testing. Now, some people have been getting this or this. And I can't have you do that. Okay? Either one of those is incorrect. Uh, correct answer is the, is the one that I've ever See, it's, stu it's stuck with me. I can't even get the wrong answer when I try. Man. Okay, so equals zero. And then from there, we'll just solve it. We'll add two to both sides. We'll get 2b equals 2, divide by 2, b is 1. So just some basic basic solving after you set that thing up. Do you feel okay on a problem like this? Yeah. Now are you ready for a legitimate word problem? Yeah. No. Of course you are. Maybe not. This is our work problem. These two guys work at the same place. Sounds like a joke. <laughs> Tim and John, they have the same job. Let's say they're, they're building something, okay? It takes Tim two hours to do this one task. So let's say it's building a, a radiator for a car. I don't know what he does. Let's say he's, he's doing that. It takes him two hours to build this thing. So Tim, takes two hours. Write that a little bit better for you. Takes two hours for a job. Now, John, he's a little slower, okay? So it takes John three hours to do exactly the same thing. Maybe he's just a little bit more thorough. Who knows? So here's what happened. Tim and John, they've both been working, right? And it takes Tim two hours for a job, two hours for a job. Every single day is two hours for his job. And it takes John three hours for a job. Maybe it's, it's cutting lawn or cleaning the house or something. Clean the house is a great, great example. So maybe they're cleaning this house, okay? It takes Tim two hours to clean the house. takes John three hours to clean the house. The boss comes to him and says, look, guys, we, got, we have this house. We're, we're behind. I'm going to take both of you off your jobs. I'm going to put you on this one house. You're going to work together. Okay, you're going to work together on this house. You get the idea? So usually Tim just cleans the house by himself, and John just cleans the house by himself. But now today they're going to work together because we need to bang this house out and get it done quick. Are they going to work quicker together or individually, do you think? Together. Probably together. I mean, if you clean a house with somebody, doesn't it take you less time? Mm -hmm. I, would, I would certainly hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, just going behind you, just, yeah, screw this. Right? Yeah, that's, that's generally the way it works. It, it takes you less time. So what I'm going to ask is how long would it take them to do the job together? How long would it take if they worked together? Any ideas? Um, the proportion? Could be an idea, sure. It's an idea. Any other ideas? How long do you think it's going to take them? Throw out a number. Do you think it's going to take them five hours? Three hours. Three hours. Okay. Uh, two and a half hours. 
Less than two hours. Yeah. Let's take a vote. How many people think more than five hours? Five hours or more. How many people think uh, between two and three? Okay, how many people think less than two? Okay. I want you to think about this and then answer that question again in your heads, okay? How long does it take Tim to do the job? Two hours. That's by himself, right? Mm -hmm. If someone's helping Tim, is it going to take him more than two hours now? No. no. He can do the job alone in two hours, right? Mm -hmm. So if he can do this job alone in two hours and John helps him, how in the world is it going to take him longer than two hours? Does that make sense? No, John takes a lot of time from him. Yeah, John's screwing up or something, I guess. I don't know. You can't just average them, is what I'm getting at. You can't just average these, these, these things. If you clean a house in two hours, this is you, you're Tim now. If you clean a house in two hours and someone comes and helps you, is it going to take you more than two hours or less than two hours? Less. Clearly less. That's what's happening to Tim. John's coming in helping him. This should be less than two hours. Not you have to be with me on that. That's important. So if you get something like seven hours, you go, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if I get more than two hours here, I've done something wrong. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. I get more than two hours, you've done something wrong. Here's a way to do this. We're going to set up a table. We're going to have Tim, John, and together. We're going to have total time, but this right here is the key column. Okay, we're going to fill this out in just a second. How long does it take Tim? Two hours. How long does it take John? Three. How long does it take him to get him? Five. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Here's the key part in doing this problem. Watch carefully, okay? You kind of have to understand this in the last few minutes that we have. If it takes Tim two hours to do a job, how much of the job does he get done in one hour? So that's a question that gets filled in here. How much of the job per hour? Let's say this is you. Let's say you clean your house. Let's say you're working steadily, okay? You don't take any breaks. You steadily plod along, blah, 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 doing, doing your work for two hours. If you clean a house and it takes you two hours to do that, how much of the house have you gotten done after the first hour? Half. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. And so you get half done the first hour, you get the second half done the second hour, you're done. Does that make sense? That's why it took you two, two hours. That's why it took you two hours. So if it takes Tim two hours to do his job, he's getting half of the job done every hour that he works. He's doing half of a job. Are you clear? It's a big thing. Now, let's, let's say what John. It takes John three hours to do his do the job. It takes him three hours. How much of the job is he getting done in the first hour? <coughs> one third the first hour, one third the second hour, the last third in the third hour. That's why it takes him three hours to do his job. It's a third of the job per hour. Are you with me on this? Oops. Now, if two, do you see the pattern here? Two hours, half of the job done each hour. Three hours, third of the job done each hour. X hours, what's that going to be? Look at the pattern. Two, one half. Three, one third. X. Yeah? It's got to be that, right? Let's say that was 10. Let's say that was 10. We, I don't even know. But let's say that's 10. If, if X was 10, you'd have a tenth of the job done every hour. So that's why it would take you 10 hours. Are you with me on that? So whatever, how long this is, it's 1 over X. 2 gives you 1 half. 3 gives you 1 third. X gives you 1 X. 1 over X. Now the last thing that we have to do, we'll finish this off tomorrow, but I'm not going to go through this whole thing again. It takes too long. How much of the job Tim can do per hour? plus how much of the job John can do per hour is the same as what they can do together per hour. This is Tim's per hour and John's per hour. If you add that together, you get total per hour. Can you solve this? Mm -hmm. How do you solve that? LC this is equation. Get rid of denominators. LCD is how much? No, not six. Uh, don't forget that X. Lots of people forget that X, and then this does not work out for you. Okay? You multiply 
all these things by 6x. We simplify where we can. Let's look at that. 6 and 2, that becomes 3x. Do you see where the 3x is coming from? Yes. Mm -hmm. 3 and 6 becomes a 2, you get 2x. See where the 2x is coming from? Mm -hmm. Equals, what happens over here? Six. Yeah, x's are gone. Hey, we just change a really hard problem into something that's very easy. Combine your like terms. 5x equals 6. If you divide by 5, you get 6 fifths. What's 6 fifths? 1 and 1 fifth. One and one fifth what? Hours. That's one hour and twelve minutes. Does that seem reasonable as far as what we talked about? Yeah. That's less than two. One hour and twelve minutes is what they do. That's how we do a work problem. Did that make sense for anybody? Raise your hand if you did. Okay. You might want to watch this one again if that you didn't quite get that. Uh, for seven point six. <clears throat> and it's a way that we can use. The distance equals rate formula to our advantage. You ever heard of distance equals rate times time? Yeah. Should make sense, right? I mean, if you go, let's say you're traveling 100 miles an hour for three hours, how far have you gone? Hopefully 300 miles, right? That's, that's what distance equals rate times time means. It says you take how fast you're going times how long you've been going it for, and that's how far you went. Anyone ever gone 100 miles an hour for three hours? Not in an airplane? I wish I had. I want to be a race car driver. It would be fun. I think like 160 average speed around a track like that. that that's, that's fun. I would imagine you'd get dizzy. I would get dizzy. So let's say that a car travels 600 miles in the same time that a truck travels 450 miles. Now, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. That should make sense, right? If you're going down the road, aren't you going faster than those big trucks that you pass? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're annoying, right? Stop right in front of you. Like, but I never understood why those stupid big trucks have to pass another stupid big truck <laughs> going like a quarter of a mile faster. Like, <laughs> it takes like 10 minutes. Why? Why? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for you. But whatever. So anyway, uh, the car and the truck are traveling the same amount of time. The car is going to go further. What I want to know is if the car's speed is 15 miles an hour more than the truck's, what are the two speeds? This is a distance equals rate times time formula. However, what you're going to do is you're going to manipulate this formula. I want to show you something on this. Look at your word problem. Read the thing that's the same. What's the same? Are the distances the same? No. Are they going the same distance? No. Oh. Are they? No. How far did the car go? 600 miles. How far did the truck go? Is that the same? No. Is the speed the same? No. no. No, one's going 15 miles an hour faster. What's the same? Time. Here's what you do. You look at your formula. Notice how it says distance equals rate times time. Mm -hmm. You solve for the thing that is the same. If the distance, listen carefully. If the distances had been the same, you'd be done. D distance equals, that, that's solved for D. You want D all by itself. Distance is not the same, time is the same. What we want here is to get time all by itself, solve for time. How can I get time all by itself in this equation? If I divide by time? Yeah, if I divide by what? T. Not D. Not T. I want to leave T alone. I want to get rid of R. Look, if I divide both sides by R, that's gone, right? True. I get time equals distance over 
radian. You solve for the thing that says the same. It will say same something. You have to have the same something, otherwise you can't have an equation. So it will be the same distance, the same rate, or the same time. You solve for the thing that's the same. And then we're going to make a table up. We have a spot for distance, spot for rate, spot for time. We'll have car, we'll have truck. What we're going to do out of this, you're going to set this up in such a way that you have the, the item that it says the same, so in this case our time, over on the right, the far right column. Here it doesn't matter so much, I'm going to put distance and I'm going to put rate. And we fill out this, this equation, is, or this table, as much as we can. What's the distance for the car, ladies and gentlemen? How about the truck? How fast was the car going? Oh, more than one. More than the truck. Okay. How fast was the truck going then? Well, we have to have something up there. Do you know? Then call one of them X. Minus 15. Well, if you call the car X, and this is X minus 15. I'd probably, I like dealing with pluses, because I'm a positive type of guy. <laughs> so we're going to call the truck X. And the car is going to be if the car's, 15 miles an hour faster. Here's the whole deal. This is what you need to do this for. Watch. Look at the board. This is like the whole, whole thing in the last minute after we have to do this. Time equals distance over rate. You believe that, right? This is our time column. We don't know the exact time they're traveling, but I know it equals distance over rate, right? Yes. Do you have a distance? Yes. Do you have a rate? Yes. Right, distance over rate. So in your time column, you're going to use the fact that you solved for time already. You go, okay, time equals distance over rate. What's my distance? 600. What's my rate? X plus 15. Are you following that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you why we do that in a second. Now, time for the truck. Time equals distance over rate. What's the distance for the truck? What's the rate for the truck? Now, last thing in our, oh, it's going to be perfect timing. Last thing, don't look at the clock. I looked at the clock. I, I'm telling you, it's perfect timing. Last thing, what was the same here? What's the same? Time. Time's the same. You get it? Time being the same means time is equal. Do you, do you follow me? They travel the same amount of time. We have two expressions for time here. These are equal times. I know it looks weird for a time, right? You go, oh yeah, that's exactly 45 minutes. Who knows? This is your times. If your times are the same, what you know is that time for the car, which you just figured out, is the same as the time for the truck. Time for the car equals the time for the truck. They had the same time. We just made up the time fancily. Ooh, that's a not even word. <laughs> made up in a fancy way. Can you solve that? Yeah. Sure. How would you solve it? It's proportion. Cross multiply that. Solve for x. Okay, cross multiply to solve for x. That will give you what? What's x again? The rate. Rate for what? The truck. So when you solve this, x will give you the rate for the truck. You add 15, you get the rate for the car. Are you guys with it on this one? I would feel okay with this, with this problem. I'm not going to solve it the way down. We don't have time. But this is the idea for the setup. That's the important step. I know you cross multiply. You can distribute. Get rid of the smaller variable, solve for x. x is the time for the truck. Add 15 miles an hour, you get the time for the car.